Ladies and gentlemen, let me bring her out right now. Let's give her a warm yes. San Francisco yes. welcome. Yes. Yes. Miss Shirley Scott. <laughs> Shirley Scott was known as the queen of the organ. Her influence is words can't even express what she was. People stop saying a lady organist or a girl organist. Uh, they just said organist when they mentioned Shirley. Shirley felt so good. I felt like I was in church every gig. And when, when other people would play, you could hear her in the back. She'd go, oh, go ahead, baby. <laughs> you know? Shirley made 40 albums as the leader of her own groups. There wasn't a gig we didn't do where the people weren't into it. Yeah, she's a sweetheart, man. She really took care of us, and, and, and I think a lot of what comes out of our instrument is a result of that tutelage. I had an opportunity. This is another day. My father was always doing this to me. I should punch him in his head, man. Uh, he dared me to come down to, he gave me some city paper from Philadelphia and says, hey, uh, you should go down to uh, this place, Ortlieb's Jazz House, and sit in at the, at the jam session and try to get a gig. So I went down, <laughs> and when I walked in the door, it was Shirley Scott. And then Tim starts playing, so she, she goes over to him, she says, where did you come from? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, it's love at first sight. So as soon as I felt like I was halfway in, I was like, you have to hear my boy. He's a monster on the trumpet. And I was hanging out with Tim Moorfield. We'd learn tunes together, we did all this stuff, and he goes, man, we should go into Philadelphia. We should go into Philadelphia. There's this woman playing in Philadelphia at this jam session at Ortlieb's. She's killing. And I said, really? And I said, uh, okay, I'll go. So I was driving and we were driving in. I said, well, we have our horns, but we're not gonna play, right? He goes, well, she asked me if I'd come and sit in on a tune. I said, okay, but I'm not. So we get to the club and Shirley Scott is playing with Mickey Roker and Arthur Harper and is swinging. So she sees Tim walk in and she's like, ah, she just started laughing. Ah. And she's like, come on, baby, you gotta play. And he goes and whispers in her ear. And I said, no, he's not, no, he's not. As usual, he played the stink out of the trumpet, number one. And, and number two, I remember Shirley saying to him after he was done, yeah, Terrell, you sure you ain't been here before? And walked away. We were pretty much in her band from that point. And so Tim and I just started doing gigs with her. She'd tell us the songs and we'd go practice them together. We just started playing with her all the time. You know, one night out of the blue, she was like, you guys, um, I'm going to be doing a record at the end of the week. And we're like, great. And she's like, I want you guys to play on it. Oh, great. What music do you have? I'll get it to you tomorrow. We were like, we kept calling her, Shirley, what music are we playing? What music are we playing? What music are we playing? Oh, I don't know yet, baby. And then the day which she's like, we're going to, she calls us, says, I want to have a rehearsal. So we go to this rehearsal and she has no music. I didn't get any music for you guys. So you guys, I'm just going to play the songs on piano. You learn them. You put together things and come in. This is like the night before. So what we do is, you know, at that time we had these kind of cassette recorders. So uh, we recorded the music, listened to it, and then we stayed up all night and we created like all these counter melodies and harmonies to the music. And then we drove to uh, Rudy Van Gelder's studio the next day, no sleep, and went in and recorded the record. <laughs> On the bandstand, a lot of music was learned here. She'd have a new tune, I got a new tune. There wouldn't be any paper. Not that she couldn't write music, because she could. But we would, Terrell and I, if you can imagine doing this publicly on stage, she would play a melody, and the band would start to play, and she would play it over and over and over again. It was like she was spoon-feeding children in front of the audience. And she would give us the do's and don'ts and the yeses and no's to how to go about learning this music. You know, real fundamental things, like you you can't play 
fast what you can't play slow. Always work on swinging. Always play. Always work on playing the blues. She was always encouraging, even to the person that really couldn't play. You know, she'd say, okay, baby, that was better than last week. Now you go make sure you transcribe some Louis Armstrong. Now don't you forget. She'd say it in a really encouraging way, and that's what the community needed. They needed a Shirley Scott. You can still find George in Newport checking out his festival, and he's got a sweet ride. If I don't hear the music, I don't know what my festival is all about. George turns 90 this year, but he's still...